chords. Um, Luke, if you could swap back to the other PC. Um, and then we'll just play a video whenever you can relate to it, like the magma sword. You good? All right. So first we got the Ferox. He is our cute, adorable, cuddle, 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 a bull <laughs> yeah. shoulder pet uh, right. that also transforms into an aggressive fighting dino. Um, he's got an extensive list of mechanics uh, related to his fighting and transformation. Um, you will have to look at the videos for, for more info on that, and more detailed info on that. Um, but he's quite a treat, and he's got quite a few movement abilities once he's in his mountable form, or his larger form, uh, which you can mount it. What's up, Josh? Hello, Josh. He's joining us. Next, we have our Magmasaur. We have a video for this to show. Yes, if I, um, yeah, so then we'll play the video first. Uh, if we can find it. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. So that was our Magmasaur. Uh, he is the uh, the epitome of a fire lizard. Mm -hmm. Shoots fire, throws out, spits out fiery balls. Is a tank. Is a tank. Uh, Definitely a tank. Creates fire, mm. lives in fire, swims in fire, doesn't like water. <laughs> doesn't like He's He's pretty much all fire. Yeah. And that is our Magmasaur. There is quite a bit more, but again, Go through the go through the recaps. We have much more in depth recaps on our Twitter link. Yeah, so on our Twitter and all of our posts uh, leading up to survive the arc, you should start seeing a lot more information start to roll out heading into the next few weeks to our launch window. Which is it's coming up fast, but it's it's still a ways away. And next we have our ocean platform, ocean platforms. We have a wood and a metal version. Uh, both of these are buildable on, like, any other platform structure. Uh, but they float in the water. They can't be touching land. They don't, they don't work well on land. They have to be at the right sea level. Uh, you can attach ladders to any size of them. And then the interiors will let you fill inside with either foundations or you can use that to build a, uh, a cage downwards to protect any of your water tames in the open ocean. And then they will degrade over time, so you do have to make sure that you are actively playing on the server, uh, making sure that those are being refreshed just to keep the oceans clean. Or at least active. All right, go ahead and play the video, yes, sir. Next, we have the got it. Remote guided missile. This thing is fantastic. It is a shoulder launched, remote guided, and remote controlled missile. Uh, once it launches, you have control of where the missile goes. It's very fast, and as it's going, it's going to keep getting faster. Uh, but it does quite a bit of damage, and once you learn how to, to aim it and pre plan your path so that you can hit your target the way that you, you intend to. Uh, it's it's quite rewarding, and you can leave a message on, on the missile and for the players that get hit by it uh, while also <laughs> painting it. So you can add your own u little unique flair to each one. Oh, man. Next, we have our tech alarm system and pressure plate. Uh, these two are very, very new items. They're trigger-type items. What they do is they detect things that are coming within them. For the pressure plate, it's anything that steps on them. For the 
tech alarm system, it's anything that comes within a set range. You can change that range by size, by shape, length, height, width, mm -hmm. or just radius. Uh, and what you can do is you can decide, you can set configurations on whether a enemy dino or a player or an enemy player or a friendly player, uh, any number of those settings. There's quite a few. It's hard to name them all. Uh, any number of those settings can either activate, deactivate, or toggle uh, whatever anything that is attached to the pin code that you send as an activation code. Um, so essentially, these are just trigger, triggering devices. Um, you can set a, 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 a scenario for what will happen and what will activate and what they will activate and how they'll activate it. Um, so you can set up traps with these. You can set up cages that automatically close as soon as a wild dino gets in or as soon as a player gets in. Um, you can trap your friends if you really want to. Um, there's quite a few things you can do with this. Uh, and then for the attack alarm system, it just gets bigger because you can detect even more things uh, in the tech pressure plate. It's just anything that walks on it. Um, and then they'll be able to, you know, trigger anything within a, a range that you can also configure the size and shape of for both of these. Um, so these are going to be really exciting things just to see what kind of system people can set up with uh, these simple mechanics. Because uh, there's a whole lot you can actually do with that. I'm looking forward to see what the modders do with that. Uh, the, I'm, that's going to be amazing. Uh, they're definitely going to run off to the races with it. But our player base alone, just with with this, with an activation, deactivation, and toggle alone, yeah. is, is huge. There, there's already a lot that could be done with that, just with the, the standard mechanics. And then next we have our tech jump pad, which is, it is just a jump pad. Um, mm -hmm. You can choose where it's facing, where that that pad is is directed towards, and then the angle that it, it is it is directed at. So you can specify exactly where you want to, to point it at, or where you want the pad to be pointed at, and then you can configure how effective and how strong that impulse is going to be. So you can launch someone as far as you want or as short as you want, and that'll be a consistent distance. Um, so these are going to work gr great as quick travel pads or just something that is a fun and enjoyable thing to do. Set up a mode of these and just have them repel, repel enemies. Well, every everyone who's tested these has set up like a big giant jump section. Like they just start bouncing from one to the other to the other to the other. Um, it's always a fun first thing to do, but there's there's quite a bit more that can be done with them. And then next we have our fishing net. This is one of our primitive oh, items. I did see a lot of... There's a video for it first. Oh, awesome. We got a video. Let's do that real quick. And that was our fishing net. Uh, so this is one of our primitive items, and this will open up a whole new uh, access to fish that you don't normally have in the lower tier. Uh, there will definitely be that, that those very early moments of having to hunt down fish with spears. Uh, but once you get past that really early stage and start working into building a base, at least a thatch, yeah. um, you'll be able to get, get this fishing net, which will help you be able to catch fish pretty much at an instant's notice as long as you have, you can see them. And uh, as many as you can get within that net, you'll pull in and then it'll harvest the fish and then you'll have a rare chance of getting a rare resource. And then next we have the mining drill, which is a machine tier or closer to like the fabrication tier uh, item. This is going to be a harvesting augmenter for, for the player. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that will let you harvest anything that you want to harvest at much better rates than 
than you would normally with any normal harvesting tools that a player has access to. Um, it's not going to be specifically better than any harvest uh, specialized dino. Like there's, you know, is always going to be the, the master of thatch um, and many other things because he's the there's, you know. Uh, <laughs> but ankylosaurs are always going to be the greatest metal gatherers, especially if you're spending the time in breeding them. Uh, but and when you're still working up to that point, this is going to be your go-to weapon. Or whenever you're just working in a more solo fashion or you're in a much more uh, defined living space, you're trying to stay under the radar, um, these are tools that will really help you get through the through those grinds and still get a lot of resources without having a huge exposure of a, of a whole dino pen and everything else. And it is also run off gasoline, which is fantastic because it's very easy to make. Um, it will overheat if you if you use it for extended periods, so you do have to let it rest every now and then uh, to cool down. Video time. Video And that was our tech shoulder cannon. Um, it's hard. It, it's a sentry gun attached to your shoulder that's amazing. Uh, it's going to be your best friend. It has three modes of fire. Uh, each mode has its upsides and its downsides. Uh, it's, it's pros and its cons and what it's good for. Uh, there's a rapid fire that is fires uh, I guess has a plasma. much higher rate of fire. Um, but it is a slightly slower projectile, um, so things at a distance or small things are a little bit harder for this to hit and keep up with. Um, and then it has the standard fire, which is just a standard projectile, still avoidable, um, and still searches around the player. And then it has the sniper fire or the charged fire, and that will take a little bit more time, a much slower rate of fire, but it is a much faster projectile and much more capable projectile. I think the computer just... Oh my god. Uh -oh. We're at 85,000. 85,000? 85? Oh my gosh. It was wow. the... You know what it was? It was the lunar biome. It did it. The lunar biome has taken us over that next hump immediately. Fantastic oh job, God. everyone. Or just our amazing community coming in clutch. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so tech shoulder cannon, back to that. Overcharge mode. Um, and as far as settings go, it works very similar to a turret. You can choose what it will attack, um, how it will attack, and what range it, it, it should reach out to attack, what your safe zone is. Um, and then... It runs off of element, and it doesn't require any specific armor to actually attach it to. Um, these are very scary for PvP, I'm sure, um, but they are dodgeable. All, all the projectiles are going to be reasonably handleable, at least if you're staying at a distance. Um, if someone gets right up on you with one of these, it's going to be very, very, very hard to avoid getting hit by it, um, and they're going to get that extra damage consistently. Of consi that extra boost of consistent damage to you. But as long as you're moving and keeping a distance, uh, they should be much more manageable. So that's something to keep in mind whenever you start seeing these in the game. Uh, but they are quite fun. <laughs> They're very good for dinosaurs. Did you add? Yeah, I know. Uh, next is Me and our... Jesse's son. <laughs> next is our Bloodstalker. Uh, if we want to do the video for that, this one is... Fantastic. And I don't mean to interrupt you guys. Oh. oh, now we're ready. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Let me say this real quick. Sorry. Thank you, Jesse, uh, for the $5,000 donation, putting us up to $85,395. $85,000? $85, right oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you're right. All right, we're we doing giveaways? Not yet. Oh, we're still know. working through Here, the recap. You take over. 
Let's start the video. And there is our Bloodstalker. Uh, this guy is just a, 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 a treat. He is just a, a blast to learn to play, to learn his movement style. Uh, he, is, he can swing, he can jump, he can dash. Not really dash, but he can throw out some webs and pull towards him really fast. It's pretty similar to a dash. Um, and then on top of that, he can float. As he's falling down, he can slow his, his fall down significantly. He can walk on water. He can pull things in with his web, as long as they're small enough, at least. Um, he feasts off of blood. Uh, wow, it is a long day. He feasts off of blood. Um, and he, is, he has a f sort of symb symbiotic relationship with its rider. Um, and he'll give him a, a bonus a vision, a boosted vision to help him hunt better uh, and help, help the rider find targets for the, for the, uh, the blood stalker. Um, and it'll be able to stick to walls. Um, it's quite an impressive creature. Yep. Um, a lot going on there with that one. Yeah. Yeah, this one is, this one has a lot. But he's, he's, he is the mobile everything. And also sentry mode. If you pull out a weapon, he'll actually stand up make himself a lot taller. He'll expose the rider fully forward so that the rider can shoot a weapon forward. Um, and any weapon you can you can hold while mounted will work with this. And the next would be our biome-specific reskins. Mm -hmm. uh, we're only announcing a, a few right now, but we have the Volcanic Allosaurus, the Snow Saber, the Bog Spino, the Bog Paraceratherium, the Bog Raptor, the Bog Parasaur, the Ocean Mosasaur, and the Bog Tapiara. Um, those are just a very few of our bog, or <laughs> biome specific variants, uh, but with Genesis, we're going to be doing quite a few biome specific creature reworks. Um, mostly just a retexture, uh, giving them a new fresh look, but just something to, to freshen up the environment, make it look much more natural, and make it the the, the alien environment that it really is. And the next is our motor. Our motor. 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 I, it's very hard for me to not say motor, like a you car motor. It, but nobody I, will notice the difference. I feel like that's, that's, that's the way to say it, but then I, I feel like I'm saying car motor, and it's strange. But motor is our sub-boss, our... Looks cute and cuddly. Yeah, not very cute and cuddly. Uh, she is a massive, massive eel. Uh, she hides out in a cave. Uh, she's got lots of little babies that you'll have to fight to get to her. Um, there's a lot of electricity going on with these eels. A lot of projectiles flying around. Very dangerous type projectiles. Um, it's an exciting fight, and it's our first truly underwater boss fight. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on with it, a lot of setup and, and spin. I don't want to spoil too much because it really is a, it's, it's a visually stunning fight. Uh, the visuals on this already, you can see just that mouth alone is just, the way that it opens up is iconic. Um, but there's a lot of great colors going on. There's a lot of great lights and we're playing with a lot of that really well. It's it's exciting. It'll be a very, very fun fight. Or at least that's what we're shooting for. It'll be fun. Challenging. I'm looking forward for to it. For sure. And then next. Last but not least. You gotta click the screen so I can. Oh, right. There you go. Got it. Is our Astro Cetus and our Lunar Biome. And we'll take you to the trailer now. <laughs>
And that was our Astrocetus and a sneak peek of our lunar biome, which is stunning. Yes. As oh, is our bog biome bog. that we got. We got some some shots of, but it, we you couldn't see a whole lot. No, you couldn't. You'll, you'll that might have been intentional from the camera's perspective, but I'm sure. Oh, it's it's beautiful. It is. It's That's beautiful. One of the few areas that I spent uh, quite a bit of time in, uh, and it's breathtaking for sure. I'm sure you've got a lot of things that you're planning on bringing out and rolling out to the community in the following. Months. Yep, uh, there'll be a lot of stuff we'll be talking about leading up to this and leading up to other things that are, will happen next year. Um, yeah, I'll have a lot of conversation uh, that I'll be having with the community, getting feedback on various points, uh, on various things, uh, because there's a lot of things happening. We want to make sure we take that feedback in and we're accounting for it. Uh, so uh, you'll probably see me reaching out with many different forms, uh, uh, soliciting feedback. So. Uh, keep your eyes out. I'll be I'll be reaching out. All right, I think we're down to the